Kristen, thank you, Jeff, and uh, thanks to Dan and Needy as well. Okay, so there's incredible interest in AI um, across the industry, and this is also, you know, when we look at it, AI is really the defining technology that's shaping the next generation of computing, and frankly, it's AMD's largest and most strategic long-term growth opportunity. Now, in AI, we're focused on three key areas. First, it's delivering a broad portfolio of high-performance GPUs, CPUs, and adaptive computing solutions for AI training and inference, spanning across data center, edge, and intelligent endpoints. Second, it's developing an open and proven software platform to enable our AI hardware to be deployed broadly and easily. And third, it's really working with the industry, and it's expanding the deep and collaborative partnerships we have established to really enable the ecosystem to accelerate AI solutions at scale, because in this space, it's all about the ecosystem. Now, when you look at where we are today, we're actually very uniquely positioned with a broad portfolio of AI platforms across data center, edge, and endpoint. And that's powered by a number of engines. That's powered by our Ryzen AI engine, our Versal, our Alveo, our Epic, and of course, our Instinct accelerators. Now, looking at where we're deployed today, it's really in many, many different places. So if you look at the edge, for example, NASA uses our leadership FPGAs on the Mars rovers to accelerate AI-based image detection. When you look at automotive, Daimler, Vionier, Subaru, these are just some of our customers that are using AI silicon and software to power their driver assist and advanced safety features. In healthcare, leaders like Clarius are using AMD adaptive SOCs for faster AI-based imaging and solutions to really allow doctors to make quicker and more accurate diagnoses. And industrial, customers like ADB are using our technology for AI-assisted robotics. And Kakao Cloud is using many of our products for their vision applications such as AI-based privacy and growth systems. And earlier this year, we launched our Ryzen 7040 series CPUs, the industry's first x86 processors with a dedicated AI engine. And these have been ramping nicely, and we expect more than 70 Windows PC designs from the top OEMs to launch later this year, powered by Ryzen AI. So when you look at all that, there's no question that AI will be the key driver of silicon consumption for the foreseeable future but the largest opportunity is in the data center. And over the last six months or so, the broad adoption of generative AI with large language models has really taken this growth to a different level. So people keep asking me, you know, what is the opportunity, Lisa? What is the opportunity? Um, what I'd like to say is, look, we are still very, very early in the life cycle of AI. I mean, there's so much opportunity for us. But when we try to size it, we think about the data center AI Accelerator 10 growing from you know, something like $30 billion this year, over 50% compound annual growth rate to over $150 billion in 2027. And it may be higher, maybe lower. <laughs> but what I can say for sure is it's going to be a lot uh, because there's just tremendous, tremendous demand. Now, AMD has been investing in the data center accelerator market for many, many years. And you know, today, if you look at where we are, we power many of the fastest supercomputers in the world that are using AI to solve some of the world's biggest challenges. Um, for example, at Oak Ridge National Labs, this is the number one supercomputer in the world. It's the industry's first exascale supercomputer in Frontier. They're running large AI models on AMD Instinct GPUs to accelerate their cancer research. In Finland, the Lumi supercomputer uses AMD Instinct GPUs to power the largest Finnish large language models with 13 billion parameters. And we're also collaborating with researchers at the Allen Institute who are also using Lumi to create a state-of-the-art, fully open LLM with 70 billion parameters that will be used by the global scientific community. Microsoft actually uses Epic Instinct processors, and they've built the 11th fastest supercomputer on the recent top 500 list to run AI and HPC workloads. And we're also working with a number of other companies, like Create Telecom, on their 11 billion parameter large language model. So let's just take a deeper look at how Lumi is using Epic CPUs and Instinct accelerators for AI. Cancer is one of the major burdens for human health. It takes a long time for the pathologist to go through one sample. 
the aim of Combat AI is to build this decision support tool for pathologists to help them make the diagnosis. We show millions and millions of tissue samples taken from patients to this neural network. The more data you feed, the better the model becomes. It takes a lot of compute to crunch that data and develop insights that we can use to advance humanity. So the major challenges in analyzing these tissue images is of course a lot of this technical variation that arises from preparing these samples, like fixation and cutting and staining, and this of course poses like challenges in training these neural networks. So with these AI-based decision support tools, we are able to provide pathologists with a tool for them to base their diagnosis on the data. The supercomputer we built is going to help people to build more accurate and better models, get better outcomes. We're impacting the lives of billions of people. One of the many stories of you know how people are using AI to uh, really accelerate sort of next generation systems. Now, to enable generative AI, you need both best in class hardware, but we also need a great software ecosystem. So let me now invite AMD President Victor Peng to the stage to share more about the growing software ecosystem for our AI solutions.